G'day and welcome back. This week we've come to one of the top national parks in Australia, Kakadu. Litchfield was an absolute blast and in our opinion, a little bit underrated. So we're keen to see how Kakadu stacks up. Primitive organism very much like it. The fossil record in our genes goes a long way to proving that every living thing that shares this planet with us still carries this ancient genetic survival circuit in more or less the same basic form. I propose the reason this gene circuit is conserved is that it is a rather simple and elegant solution to the challenges of a sometimes brutish and sometimes bounteous world that better ensures the survival of the organisms that carry it. So we're driving currently halfway through the drive between Litchfield and Kakadu and it's about a two hour drive and it's pretty much been two straight sections of about 100 kilometres each and very straight roads and pretty much the same scenery we've been seeing in Litchfield. So, good thing is, took the opportunity to download a bunch of audiobooks so we'd have something to listen to. We've been really trying to listen to things that are both educational and interesting on these trips, so at least like we're learning something. Yeah. And we've got to kind of got to the point where we've done so many big stretches of driving that we've pretty much exhausted 90% of the, the topics we can think of just to go back and forth on. So, um, you know, you can only cover the same things and come to the same conclusions so many times before audiobooks really do save your relationship. Um, <laughs> So we just used Wiki Camp to find this awesome four-wheel drive campground. As you can hear, we're going to have some corrugates at the minute. Dirt road, lots of corrugates, but that's the whole reason we went to the van we've got. Yay! It's an off-road van, we're in a four-wheel drive. Take advantage of it when you can. Hit up these corrugates that hopefully put off a lot of people. And it's pretty easy, man. it doesn't seem like it's been graded that long ago. Yeah, there's some bumps in the road and you can feel it, you can hear it sort of vibrating, but if this is the worst it gets, then oh. perfect. And apparently this campground is right next to one of the waterfalls you wanted to check out, which might be a repeat of Litchfield where we get to swim to cool off every day. That's a big, yeah, that's a big plus in my book now after Litchfield. Get as close as you can to a swimming hole and a beautiful waterfall because you'll spend, you know, you'll go there at least twice to three times a day minimum yeah. just to cool off. So. Hopefully this campsite has it all. It looks like it does, so. Dunk's doing all the heavy lifting, so it's just filming. I think we went past the campsite, so working our way back. Caravan set up, 
we had our pick of the spots because there's no one else here, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it does mean that we got to pick a spot that had little park bench, little fire pit, already complete with wood. Got to put the caravan in a great spot here, which is flatter than I think I've put it on most caravan sites that we've stayed at. So pretty psyched with that. And we're in full sun. So the solar panels will hopefully charge the batteries right up and then we can use the 240 volt with our inverter and charge some of our devices and, you know, live a bit of luxury on this bush camp. But anyway, five o'clock, sun's going down. We looked up on wiki camps that there's a waterfall slash swimming hole about a K down the road from here. So we're gonna jump back in the Ranger, hit that up, try and get a little evening swim in to cool down. Will it be better than Florence Falls? We will see, it'll certainly be different and different is always good. So I don't know, I don't know if I agree with that statement, different is always good. Different is always interesting. So let's go check it out. Definitely not going to go any closer to this part of the water. I must admit, we didn't read. We didn't read up about how far it was until we got here and we just read the sign and it's a 2k walk. So hopefully we can get there before it gets dark. I must admit there was a sign there saying no swimming crocs. Yeah. And this looks crocky. Super crocky. I can't believe the um the walkway is so low compared to yeah, well, can I look the over waterway. Here? Look over here, it's like quite literally. <laughs> if there was oh my God. even <laughs> the slightest increase in yeah. water this would be swimming and, and what are these to do just to stop the crocs climbing up the water i think so because it's quite literally just where the water is so obviously the croc doesn't know to go around it there because it ends at the end well, i wonder if there was one here that's where the last person died anyway oh. we've got to get there before sunset we have a tendency to do this we stop we talk we film <laughs> and we don't get to where we're meant to be or we do and it's dark yep we need to just start carrying a torch with us at all times because we'll get there with plenty of time but we might be walking back in the dark. Do to let you in a little secret, so? <laughs> Phones have torches these oh, days. Oh, technology! A, what a world we live in, eh? Whoa! What now in my world? day, you pull up your aerial and you flip down your bottom thing. Yeah, in our day, I wasn't even allowed a phone until... God, I must have been... Well, probably about 14, 13, 14. My oh, parents yeah? didn't let me have a phone. Apparently they're worried about it frying my brain, which is probably a legitimate concern given how uh, I think we works. can I think we can see that it actually has fried Duncan's brain. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's not like no joke. Like phones used to be like I still remember when I got the like my Nokia 3315. Oh yeah, I had a 3310. Oh yeah. I got 3315 because it had um, Space Invaders or whatever it was. Like. Oh yeah, I had the 3210 and then it was a 3310 I think or the 3315 that also had Snake 2 which was like the coolest thing ever. And Space Invaders. Was it Space Invaders? No. That's what must have started your early fascination with sci-fi. Alright, alright. <laughs> and then, and then the uh, the Razer, remember that Razer phone? Oh yeah, Motorola. Motorola. Yeah. Now that was that was the coolest phone. Oh, if you'd have kept up. hold of that in its original packaging, I bet that's worth a, a few bob. Right, that's enough rambling. <laughs> We're gonna motor to the pool. No crocs yet. No, I know, but every movement I see in the water now, I'm anxious. <laughs> you right? <are? laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. worry, I was filming. I know, and I've been fine until you put the camera in my face.
you guessed it, walking back in the dark. How typical. Anyway. Nice sunset though. Light of the light of the phones to show us up. So I should probably put this back on the path so we can see where we're going. <laughs> morning day one of Kakadu. We are super keen to get out and explore. We're up early this morning. I am busy making a pot of tuna salad for lunch. I actually just tried to use up anything that's left in the fridge now and run down all our supplies in the cupboard. We're running low because we didn't actually get to a grocery store between Letchfield and Kakadu. So we're gonna head to Jabiru first thing this morning, do a bit of admin, hopefully get some internet fill up on some fruit and veg because our diet has recently been just tin food and then whilst we're up there we're going to check out the aboriginal rock art and maybe see some crocodiles there's a place called car hill crossing which at high tide apparently the crocodiles come over and eat all the fish that go over the crossing so hopefully we'll see some crocs from a safe viewing platform What are you up to? Just put the extra 40 litres of fuel in the car because we didn't, well we stopped in at fuel in Litchfield and then we used most of that getting here towing the caravan so I figured seeing we're heading into Jabarut, put all this in, comfortably get there and then we can fill up the tanks and these there and yeah I'm really enjoying, I'm really liking having these extra 20 litres because it means we don't have to stop every time we see a fuel station. I reckon you could get away without it, but it just gives you the comfort. You can get to camp and not have to worry about trying to get into a petrol station. So yeah, fuel is king in the NT. Make sure you have spares. It just makes your life a lot more easy. A lot easier, sorry. <laughs> makes your life a lot more easy. A lot easier, more easy, whatever. <laughs> Our first stop is the Bawali Visitor Centre. Whenever we arrive in a new area or national park, we always like to hit up the Visitor Centre to get a deeper understanding of the place and people of the land. A quick chat to the guides can also save you a hell of a lot of time, effort, money and fuel as they will give you a quick rundown of what is and isn't open based on the season. And in our case, a quick rundown of what planned backburning was happening in the area. In Kakadu National Park, there are actually two centres that are worth checking out. This one, the Visitor Centre, and the other one is the Aboriginal Cultural Centre, which together will help you better understand the country and the traditional owners of the land, the Binin and Mongol people. gotten to Car Hills Crossing. Yeah. See if we can't spot first crocs that we've seen. We've mm. heard about crocs being in places we may or may not have swum, but this is hopefully mm. the place we're gonna see a couple of crocs swimming down the river. So trying to work out where we're meant to be and not meant to be because Yeah there's meant to be a viewing platform. So we obviously don't want to get this too looks close. Like a boat ramp. I don't know if you're meant to be down here. <laughs> All right, well we're gonna find a viewing platform. 
I saw something moving in the water. Yeah. But... Yeah, there. But I can't work out if it's a that looks, that's a stick. twig. That's a stick. No, I saw something like properly moving before. Yeah. Okay, let's go find a dune platform. Okay, so we were at the downstream boat ramp. Look at those flies. I know, these flies love me. Done Loads sweet. more flies in Kakadu than Litchfield. Yeah, we need to get one of those masks, don't we? Yeah, yeah. But, um, so we've come up to the upstream boat ramp now, rather than the downstream boat ramp, and we've seen a sign for the Kaihol Crossing, which is where the crocodiles are meant to come. Just seen a crocodile. There's actually quite a few here. Officially seen a crocodile or a couple? Seen a couple. Yeah. I think I'm going to need to get a better, well, not a better, I just need to get a long lens for my camera because. Mm. 35 mil is pretty good for a lot of things we do. Yes. Not good for nature photography or videography. Cock spotting, anything. So I, re I got very camera or lens envy mm. when we were down there, a lady we were chatting to has this massive, long, I don't know, Nat Geo looking lens, telescopic yeah. lens. Uh, I don't think I'll go that far, but something a little bit longer so we can see those crocs. I think I got some of them, but yeah, couldn't, yeah. See, couldn't see a whole lot. No. They're so stealth though, it amazes me how the water is completely calm, like no ripples whatsoever. And then you'll just see them slowly rise out of the water. And then they get longer and longer and longer and you really get to see how big they are. And then they just disappear again and, and they're, they're gone. Just, yeah, stealth predator. track one and a half caves we're gonna head all the way around here and it's essentially a gallery of aboriginal x-ray paintings all throughout the rock formations around here and then we're gonna finish at nadab lookout and then we'll work our way back through i'm looking forward to getting up to that lookout because you can't fly drones here so it could be a good opportunity to get an aerial shot yeah. And actually see what the, the landscape looks like from a decent height. Let's go. What was that about? I'm really enjoying this breeze. This oh, hey, is that your getting breeze? Yeah. Thing? I thought you were just like so excited you were. No. It's extra airflow. It says it's 40 degrees, but just here with this breeze coming in, oh, <laughs> how good is it? It's been 40 today, so I reckon it's cooling off now. It's carting over, but... Mm. We can t we can smell rain, can't we? So maybe it's rained somewhere nearby, or maybe where it's about to rain. What can you make out? The longer I look at it, the more I see. At the start, I just saw that sort of dark red fish shape to the right. And then now I've been looking at it for a bit longer. I can then see other shapes of what I can, well, there's tons of different animals to be honest. Like there's a kangaroo there. That looks like another type of fish. Yeah, the longer I look at it, the more I'll see. Oh, wow. These ones are way better preserved than that last one. You easily make out that that's one of those long necked turtles. And then they draw on them, those patterns. They're usually things like their digestive systems and like their internal organs and so on. Wow. So it looks like cool sort of patterns and so on. But you can see there, you've got the spine of the fish, you've got all their like organs, bones and so on. That's really it's cool. It's incredible. It's like early anatomy. And I oh, love like, this one here where you've got the 
the hunter are so much larger than the ones at the other side, aren't they? Impressed that they're still here and they don't oh get weathered God. away when there's surely, even though it's under an overhang, yeah. surely water comes through and hits it at some point. You can see a lot of the um, salt coming out of the rocks and sort of dripping over it. Unfortunately, I mean, I, I'm sure they'll be here for a lot longer, but mm. eventually they'll disappear. How cool is this? It's really interesting to see. And this is like all their favorite foods, the old barramundi and turtles and so on. And they're like early anatomy drawings because you've got all the bones. And it looks like a really cool pattern, but it's actually really factual stuff. And even on the turtle there, I was just reading that sign, apparently they've highlighted where the fat is, where it's the most tasty and so on. So that's in a different color up there, which is really, really cool. It shows that all cultures kind of even far removed, think the same yeah. and seek to do the same thing. Even if it was like being, you know, Western culture and so on doing it around the Galapagos way later, mm. or indigenous cultures doing it right at the start. It's cool. It's pretty humbling being here, yeah. knowing that these have been painted by people who are no yeah. longer here thousands, thousands and thousands of, of years ago. Yeah, it's an incredible experience. Where did this wind come from? Like having to like strap my hat down. <laughs> Too heavy. Too much weight. It was that ice cream at lunch. Now we did do a lot more talking while soaking up this epic sunset, but I'm not going to lie, the audio was horrible because the wind really picked up, and I wanted to save your eardrums from having to listen to any more terrible audio. So instead, I've decided to do a quick dub of what we might have said. Oh, g'day guys. Have you seen this view? I can't believe it. It's amazing. It's just stunning. Look at those clouds. Look at how the sun shines through them. Oh, this is so good. Oh, babe. Yeah, I completely agree. This landscape is so flat and it just goes forever and then you know the wind is so blowy and look at my hair babe it's going everywhere and i just can't believe it i just can't believe how far my hand stretches out in front of me and if you look over there then there's some wind and that's where the wind's coming from and then it's blowing this way and then you can see that in my hair and then it's kind of changed direction it's going the other way but don't forget that the wind is not your friend and don't fly kites hey babe have you told them about the wind yet have you told them how windy it is? Yeah, make sure you tell them how windy it is. It's pretty windy, eh? Look at my wingspan, guys. Look how wide it is. I'm just sitting here imagining I'm a bird. Do you reckon I could be a bird? I reckon I'd be a pretty good bird. I could just fly up on the clouds, riding these winds, and oh, it'd be pretty amazing. I think that's what I'm going to grow up to be. I think I'm going to grow up to be a bird. A pretty big bird, but I think I'd be a perfect bird. Anyway, I better start talking about this, uh, this sunset. 
oh, mate, this sunset's uh, amazing. It's vast. It's colorful. It's uh, serene. It's perfect. Uh, you've got to check it out, guys. Got to check it out. Uh, anyway, back to you, Soph. This will be a six shot. I'll run up the hill and then I'll do a big spin on top of the mountain and then you can be a boyfriend of Instagram and get a great shot. I'm telling you, I look amazing. Look at this light. Look at this. Look, I'll do my spin. <laughs> Just to be clear, Sophie has asked me to uh, explain that that was definitely not her voice in that clip and was me doing a terrible voiceover, just in case uh, anyone was confused, which I doubt. Once again, thanks for watching and for getting all the way to the end. Join us next week where I promise not to do any more weird voiceovers, so there's that to look forward to, and where we check out the rest of what Kakadu has to offer. Stay safe, we'll see you on the road.